If you're in a spot where you're looking around and seeing studios online or in your town or other teachers who are offering seriously discounted sessions or even free sessions, then you are going to love this episode. I'm diving into everything you need to know about competing with those deep discounts and free offers. So stay tuned. Well, hi there. I'm Sarah Glanfield. I'm a business and marketing strategist just for boutique fitness studio owners like you. If you're ready to be inspired and make a bigger impact, you're in the right place. All you need are a few key strategies, the right mindset, and some support along the way. Join me as I share the real life insights that will help you grow a sustainable and profitable studio. This is is the Pilates Business Podcast. So welcome back to the Pilates Business Podcast. I want to talk to you all about pricing. And specifically, I want to talk to you about how you can compete with free sessions that you're seeing all over the place right now. Now, I know that pricing your services is a really sticky subject. There's no doubt about it. Whether you are pricing single sessions, packages, or membership options, or for appointments, or classes, or perhaps even a combination of all of those things, it really is enough to make your head spin. Now, I've seen a lot of evolution in the boutique fitness market when it comes to pricing. Now, when boutique fitness studios really started to take off many, many, many years ago, one of the big selling points to to a lot of the people who walk through the door was this no commitment price model. So studios typically sold packages of uh, five, 10 or 20 or more uh, sessions and as well as those drop-in sessions as well. And it was actually a big success for clients at the time because the only alternative to working out at that point were these big box gym memberships. And we know that those memberships typically lacked um, support um, and community. And this, what we know, which is what we see a lot of in the smaller studios and specifically in the boutique fitness studios like yours. Um, And these memberships were usually long-term commitments, um, but they didn't really do a lot to encourage regular attendance. So clients were happy to perhaps pay that bit more to uh, the smaller studio, to the boutique fitness studios for something that actually got them results. And what helped to get them results? Well, buying those classes and booking them in advance because doing that, putting it on the calendar, committing to showing up, um, actually put an end to that last minute voice that sort of says bail, right? Sort of says to you, okay, well, we'll go and do that tomorrow, which is what we saw happen with those gym memberships. Knowing that clients had already paid for a session was motivation enough to get off the couch. And when people started to show up, they were excited about being part of a tribe and about seeing friendly and familiar faces week after week. Now, many years later, and we're seeing all sorts of pricing models in this industry. We're seeing a lot of um, the return of memberships and subscription models for sure. Uh, We still have a lot of packages floating around and there's obviously everything in between. Now, what I know your question that you're thinking right now is, what is the best pricing model? Well, that's a whole other topic for a whole other day. Um, There's a lot to dive into there. But what I do want to talk about today is where free fits into this puzzle and specifically how you can be competitive even if you aren't offering anything for free. So over the last few years, you know, our industry has really evolved and grown multiple times over. This industry has tripled, quadrupled in size. And with that growth, we've certainly seen an increase in competition. But despite that, what we've also seen is that studios continue to expand and be successful. Now, that said, if you aren't able or willing to evolve with the industry, then there is a chance that you get left behind. 
And one of the tactics that many studios use to entice new clients into their studios, it's what they would use as their perhaps introductory offer, um, would be to give that first class away for free. Okay, that free first class. And I know that as so many of you moved into the online space, you will know that there is a plethora of studios out there offering access to online sessions, online classes for free. And that's, you know, without even talking about those free workouts that are available on YouTube and all over the, all over social media. Now, free content has always been available, but it really does feel like there has been a huge boom in free options, free workout options over the last year or two. And, you know, when we shifted into the online space early on in the COVID pandemic, one of the most frequent questions that I actually got asked was, how do I compete with free? And this is also a question that pops up a ton when I chat with studio owners about their pricing. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I'm a big proponent of giving nothing away for free. And I know that I have shared with you in the past um, that there are certainly a few exceptions. And again, that is definitely a topic that I wanted to discuss with you in another episode. But generally speaking, I do not really recommend that you ever compete with free by making your services free. Okay. Like never, 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 ever. (laughs) So for so many reasons, giving anything away for free will actually devalue your services, okay? Except except for those very specific circumstances where perhaps you are opening a new studio or you offer a specific type of service that is very unknown. And even if you do offer those for free, there are absolutely certain things that you will want to do to make sure that you are um, able to continue to attract and retain those clients that show up for those free sessions. Um, You want to retain them in your business with certain tactics. So we want to make sure that we are not devaluing our services. Getting that pricing and packaging right is an absolutely key component of your business success. And I spend a lot of time talking numbers, pricing, and packages within my community of studio owners and and instructors. And while, you know, every studio really is different, there is a key concept that applies to most boutique fitness studio businesses. Okay. And that is this. Every business, including yours, has an exchange of value. So you're giving something in exchange for a dollar amount that you are receiving. And that, you know, when you think about value, that definition of value is usefulness. It's the importance or the worth of something. So when you start to give your services away for free, you run the risk of devaluing your service in the minds of your clients and your consumers. And we don't really want that at all because what happens is if they are devaluing your services, if they feel that, you know, the free or very, very highly discounted price point is um, a good Uh, representation of the price point of your business, then when it goes, when we go on to perhaps try to sell them that next offer, which comes, you know, perhaps for the next session, or if they want to keep coming back to the studio, it's going to feel like an unnecessarily large jump to hop back up into a more standard pricing point. So, Like I said already, I really don't encourage you to give your classes or sessions away for free. Okay. And so if you do, perhaps, you know, perhaps you already are offering, and I I know that there are some of you out there who are already offering that first class for free or a free intro consultation, that sort of thing. And so if you're feeling like it's not something that you want to change and you are already offering a first class free, then there are ways to mitigate that issue of devaluing your classes with a marketing message that you kind of ensure that you are sharing around that particular offer. So you want to make sure that as you're introducing that free offer, you're also positioning the offer as perhaps different or um specific to that particular time. Um, And you want to make sure that you're super clear about what comes next 
for your clients to continue their journey with you. So if what you're doing is working and you are offering that first class free and you're very happy with that, and when I say happy with it, it should be bringing you clients, which it probably is. But most importantly, it should be um, it should also be bringing you long term clients. It should be you should be able to convert those new people, the people that come and take that first class free offer and um, transition them into long term loyal clients that are coming over and over and over again. Okay, so if that's you and it's working for you and you're getting new clients in and you're getting great conversion numbers on those clients, then don't let me get in the way of your success. But if you are not sure about whether or not it is working for you, then perhaps there's an opportunity for you to to perhaps try some other tactics around that price point or perhaps layer on marketing or uh, a customer journey uh, process that will help to convert those clients. Now, if you are in a situation where you don't offer a first free class, which I'm sure many of you are, but you may be concerned because there are other studios around you that are offering that free class, um, then you're probably wondering how it is you can compete with that. And it's I know that it's something that weighs on many studio owners' minds, many teachers' minds. And I know that when it comes to when you see a lot of people around you, offering something for free, um, and you know how enticing that is for the average person, you want to know how you can compete with that, right? And I'm here to say that you don't. You don't have to compete with that. And you certainly don't have to compete with price. So what do I mean by that? Well, what I've seen is that the more concerned that you are with pricing your services and the more that you talk about pricing in your marketing, then that tends to be what your clients also focus on. And this is something that comes up over and over again. And so often the shift actually comes with you as the studio owner to shift your focus away from the price point and focus on marketing the experience you give or the problems that you solve. So instead of competing on price, you're actually competing on what makes your studio unique, what makes your studio different, and what happens inside of the four walls of your studio or behind the screen in your online studio. Because what happens when you only talk about special deals and one-time promotions, you see over and over again, that that's where your clients tend to go as well. And, you know, some studios do well with that type of marketing tactics. They, if you have a high volume of clients and you have, you, you have a low uh, sort of need for attendance, then maybe that's something that would work. But for most of my clients that I work with, most studio owners I work with, they're looking for clients who are committed to their Uh, the routine of visiting their studio at least two to three times a week, right? And so we are not looking for clients who are looking for a deal where they show up once and never come back. Um, So what I found is that if you're talking about deals constantly, you're going to find, you're going to be attracting people into your business who are also looking for deals. Whereas if you start to shift that messaging to talk about your studio brand message, your studio, your brand promise, and you shift the positioning of your marketing to be talking about the experience, then that's what your clients will also focus on. So, you know, if you think about those low cost operators out there, those dollar stores or the low cost airlines, you know, they're all associated with low prices. You name that brand and you think of, you think of cheap, you think of low cost. Right. And what goes along with that are, you know, saving money and perhaps some compromise when it comes to quality right? So it's the, it's that, it's that low cost airline that doesn't offer seat assignments or that grocery store that sells products really close to the sell by date, right? Now, business models that focus on price are not the same as business models that focus on value. And for most of my boutique fitness studios, they are business models that are focused on value. So we want to make sure that your marketing and your pricing aligns with that. When you align all of those things, your clients will also see you differently. And so you get to decide if you want to compete on price or if you want to compete on value. And when I say value, I mean experience or what the experience you deliver inside of your studio or the impact your studio can have on your clients' lives. Now, studies in behavior economics tells us over and over again that free 
just does get people's attention. It really does get people to light up. And so we, you know, when it comes to marketing, we have to acknowledge that, that, you know, free does tend to get uh, a lot of attention from people. And so there is a lot of power in giving something away for free, but it doesn't have to be your main offer. There are very many ways to use that incentive that will in fact boost your revenue without costing you too much in overhead. And so when you start to make these small changes and these small shifts in your marketing, you can recognize yourself as being different, right? And you recognize yourself as standing out and your mindset actually starts to shift away from being concerned about what your competitors are priced at and more concerned about finding clients who are looking for the experience that you deliver instead. So ultimately, what you talk about is what will become your client's focus. And you know, the reality is that working out is free for everyone. You know, there are thousands of free YouTube workout videos. There always has been. There's thousands of Instagram lives each day. There always has been. There are thousands of Facebook group videos filled with short workouts, you know, and there's always, you know, anyone can throw on a pair of sneakers and go for a run. But despite that, clients are still flocking to your studio. So instead of comparing your studio to what is out there, instead of comparing your pricing to what is out there, acknowledge that what happens inside the four walls of your studio or behind the screen in your digital class is unique to you. And that's what you should be honing in on. Once you do that, you'll find that this pricing concern becomes less of a concern and maybe even a gift to you because you can shift your focus and the focus of your marketing to really be about the benefits of being a client in your studio. Now, there are so many ways to structure your pricing. Like I mentioned, so many different ways you can do it, but it has to 100% be aligned with your business. And there are so many ways to distinguish yourself in your marketing so that you don't have to compete on price and price alone. I've been talking about this topic a ton over the last year or so, but you know it's something that really does come up often. And there's, that's always kind of a sign on to me that there may be some other things that we need to work on inside your business to help strengthen your marketing efforts. Just something to think about. I really hope this episode of the Pilates Business Podcast was helpful to you. If it was, be sure to never miss another episode by hitting that follow or subscribe button wherever you listen to podcasts. I'll see you next time. Did you love this episode and want more? Head to spring3.com and check out my free resources that will help you run a profitable and fulfilling studio business. And before you go, one last reminder, there is no one way to do what you do, only your way. So whatever it is that you want to do, create or offer, you've got this. Thanks again for joining me today and have a wonderful rest of your day. Music.